Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we are going to be going through Cradle of Chaos Season 3, Region 3, Level 7, all 5 missions. I'll be showing you my teams, the requirements needed. It is, it is rough. It is really rough. This is not going to be content for a lot of players. I was actually stockpiling my experience potions and silver for the new heroes coming out. Roguru, for example, uh, Rhiannon, for example. I ended up using them on Knights of the Council characters to help me get through this. So we'll go through each stage because there are certain things you need to do when fighting these waves to have a better chance of winning. Obviously, stronger characters than mine are going to get through this easier. There may be other teams people are using that can get through this easier, but this is the teams I used and my thought process. So we will be resetting the level. I've already completed it. it took me ages, but now I've got the information ready to go. So we'll jump into it and, yeah, we'll go from there. So this is the hardest COC I've ever for so far so yeah let's get into it okay so diving into mission one we're versing two waves of enemies and they are hard waves the first one is a thane arg barbarian mixture and the second one is an irizit orc mixture with a, a belladonna in there just for laughs so two very powerful teams thane arg very dangerous against teams that rely heavily on buffs so you need to be aware of that and the seven knives can be a nuisance and then we have the second wave where obviously irizit not as strong now after the nerf so i mean this team has two characters on there being nerfed but it's still a very strong team so that is what we are looking at now to combat this this is the team i'm using i have my main orcs and my mordred as you can see this team is is one of my best teams. One of my best teams. And this is nerfed Mordred as well. But as you can see, I've got seven arcane stars. So I under I understand. Please un don't think I'm showing you this thinking that everyone can just achieve this. This is not a cheap squad at all. Um, but this is the final stage of Cradle of Cash. You're not going to be able to do it with much less than the best. So... I'm running level 99 on Arcane, Lascari, and Dagan, 100 on Chrome and Mordred. They are still gear 11 capped. I haven't moved them to 12 and haven't geared them for 12, except for Chrome and Mordred, which have been completely geared. So there is that. The gear is at least semi-achievable on three of the characters. But the reason we're using this team is number one, Mordred, his primary use in this fight is his polymorph. It's super important. And then we have the orcs because they don't really rely on a lot of buffs. So taking very little damage from the Thane Arg. And with Arcane, we are benefiting a little bit from her Scorching Terror. And we have Lascari, obviously, just as a safety net. So my characters don't die instantly. And we've got Chrome for damage and Degar to just survivability so we'll jump in and i'll show you the steps i take to beat this node okay so jumping into the fight the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to polymorph the dagan and then our primary target is the arcane i want to take her out as fast as i can beautiful and then we are going to move on to the dagan or the polymorphed dagan anyway we're going to get a heal out here and we are going to use Scorching Terror, takes out the Dagan, and our next target is the Chrome. I want to take Chrome out because he will do the most damage on this team. With the, we're using, now be careful, we do not want to use Scorching Terror just yet because the Thane Arg is immune to debuffs. He now has that removed from him. Should be able to take out Chrome here, and we are going to use prison on the Thane Arc now. I'm only going to use my basic attacks against the Seven Knives because they have a higher chance of dodging against special attacks. And I want to make sure I'm killing these characters without them dodging anything and 
surviving longer than they need to. So we take out the primary weapons of the team quite quickly. And with Thana, he's in watery prison, so I am going to just be using my basic attacks here and hopefully getting my cooldowns up before we go into the next wave. My Mordra has five stacks of darkness, which is beautiful. And we yeah, move into the next wave. I really wish I was able to get a heal off before, but we get it off going into the wave. And my primary goal is to take out the, um, there we go, the Belladonna. Get her right out of the picture. We do not want her, and we are gonna polymorph the Irizit. So those, oh, he fortified. Okay, I've never had this happen. That is a thing that can happen now. But can we recover from this? Ah, uh, we're gonna go for the, Dagar, we want to remove him from the picture, but we get a taunt out, so we are going to break through this. Luckily for us, the stacks now do not go past five, so how do we solve this problem? Who do we want a watery prison? The heel's already been... He can't res Belladonna. I really don't know who I'm going to watery prison here. I am going to watery prison um, to Garn, so he takes more damage. Okay, the damage transfers over to Lascari. We should be able to take out Lascari now. I'm not using the string ability from Mordred. It honestly does nothing. We really, really want to take out... This Lascari there, and now Twan's back up. Uh, we're still doing okay. We're still doing okay. Damage can't transfer. Okay, take him out. Take out Lascari now. Just finish her off beautiful. Okay, and now we move on to Dagan and take him out without any problems. And yeah, okay. That's, that's it. That's the node one. There's not really anything these two characters can do at this point. I will get my polymorph back soon. Um, we're going to get my heal out. Win a watery prison. And now he is going to take more damage when we do break through that. I'm not going to use my... I did use it. Never mind. Okay, now we polymorph the bug and it's an easy win from here. So yeah, so not too hard. I mean, it's there is a little bit of RNG. Honestly, I that's the first. That's again, that's a new thing. The the polymorph can be resisted, and as you can see, we still managed to win. Um, but one, if you polymorph that ear, is it that second wave becomes a lot easier than what you just saw. The same strategy, we killed the same enemies in the same order, just that ear is it's not getting that damage reduction out and you just kill things a lot quicker. So that's mission one. All right, let's move on to mission two. Now, mission two was probably the one I had the most trouble with. I struggled to really just come up with a team that could do this. It was the last mission I completed. You're versing three waves. The first one is the Renegades. Uh, the two Lion Goes and the two Morrigans are just damage monstrosities. Very hard to deal with. Just trying to get past this first wave is is the almost the hardest part of this node. The second wave, you move into an Orc wave, but it doesn't have... Um, Thanarg, so not ridiculously hard, but he does have a, two Chromes and two Lascaris. So again, a bit of RNG and trying to get through that without losing a character. It's painful. And then you move on to the third wave, which is honestly, uh, to me, was a bit of a joke compared to the other two. This should be the first wave, to be honest. Um, but I mean, if you can get to this wave with all your characters alive and a little bit of RNG, making sure your characters are moving before them, like I said, it does require a little bit of RNG, you should be okay. So battling this node, we are using the Renegades. So we are gonna jump down to the Renegades. We are using a, I mean, it doesn't there's no leadership. It's literally, 
I made a mistake. I apologize. I've got my notes on the side. It is an Abaddon leader. Um, demons, Abaddon leader, and then Renegades. Um, you could try this with Wilhelm. I didn't. I used Balthazar. I found him to be semi-useful. So nah, that's the team we're using. The idea is that we're trying to just get a lot of damage out from our Morrigan, taking out units when we can. Um, the Crowley is there to remove buffs from the enemy. Abaddon to potentially remove buffs and apply debuffs. Balthazar debuffs as well. And Lion Go to just take some hits. And yeah, as you can see, my Abaddon is the weakest on the team. Him being a little bit stronger would be beneficial. Balthazar being a little bit stronger as well would be beneficial. But Lion Go, Crowley, and Morrigan, I have put a lot of effort into them. They, they Morrigan was the first character I, I got to max. So again, like I, I'm going to say, I, I apologize. I don't mean to sound repetitive. I just feel like I need to say it because, you know, the community... It, it's not an easy team to achieve. There's a lot of seven arcane stars, a lot of gear 13. I understand that, but this is what I had to use to beat this node. So let's jump into it and I'll show you what you need to do. Attempt number 33. This wave, I really don't think this is the right team for this wave. If you have better suggestion, please let me know, but this is what I use to win and it's... It, we're going to use our basic attack against one of the Morrigans to get the AoE out there. Ideally, you want to hit both the Morrigans. From here, I don't want to use Hungry Abyss. I want to use my basic and get beautiful, get some AoE out on the other Morrigan. Ideally, we just want to try and kill these Morrigans with just using our basics. That's ideally what we want to happen. So there we go. Our HP is okay. And then we just keep fighting from here, get some stacks and move into this wave. This is where you're, this is where most runs will end. This wave is just extremely painful. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the dark arts. And then we're gonna use a basic attack. Actually does this, Okay, we're going to use Elemental on Dagan, and then we're going to follow up with Fencing Mistress and kill him. That is so important to kill him. Okay, now we're going to use our AoE and put everyone to sleep. We lose Lion Go. That is fine. Not a big deal at all. We're going to try and take out the Lascaris because... Lascaris will just absolutely tear through with the endless attacks they have. Arcane's quite low. Okay. Wonderful. Attempt 33. We might have it. We're not at the end yet. The Barbarians. We need to take out that Belladonna. As you can see, she's already dodging. And beautiful. We get rid of her. That's fine that the vulnerability comes out. Um, just try and get everyone to as low as possible. Dark fire gets rid of it. It doesn't, but we still have Balthazar. Oh my God, do we win? We win. Oh, this wave is just 33 attempts to get that RNG. There has to be a better solution. If you have one, let me know. But that's, yeah, it's just everything needs to line up perfectly. You can you saw there, everything nearly fell apart at the end. If you lose that line, go in the second wave, it's not the end. You can still win, as you can see. So don't just restart because you lose the line, go. Um, yeah, but whew. there you go. There's mission two. We'll move on to mission three, which is by far the easiest. Wave three is the boss node. It's a Lascari and a Rokan. Completely maxed out. Um, I'm just going to jump straight into this. I'm not going to double record it because I know I won't need to. What we are going to be using here is the Children of the Forest. And you can run as many as you want. But I can complete this with just these two. But you do what you see fit. You use all of them if you need to. And the idea is that they're going to go ahead and kill this 
well, not kill, but they're going to hit up Lucky and take her down. Wonderful. And now Bjorn is just going to absolutely shred. There you go. Just uh, compared to the other wave, this wave is just a joke. I Yeah, Bjorn, Children of the Forest are boosted, so that's why Bjorn just tears through. But as you can see, super simple. Chuck more children in if you want. You, you may not need to. The Bjorn and the and the Lucky should be enough. But that's it. That's wave number three. Nice and easy. We'll move on to way, uh, mission number four. Okay, moving on to mission number four. Again, a mission very heavily based on RNG. But I didn't find this one as difficult as mission number two. So you're versing two waves, Thanarg Orcs and a Arcane Orcs. So two Orc teams, one with a Belladonna in it though. So the team we are going to be using to verse this, and I did boost this team's level because I wasn't able to clear it with them at level 90. Maybe you could, I don't know, maybe I was just getting bad RNG every time, but we are running a Jacona and a Karana as our primary units, followed up by a Brynhild, Jean, uh, Jean, and a, where is he? You wouldn't believe it if I told you. I have to show it to you. A Siegfried. That is the team we are going to be running. Just Siegfried there to take a lot of the damage. Jean and Karana there for just the support. The damage is coming from the Brynhild. Dracona doing very little except adding the defense. His damage is actually not high at all. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. So Brynhild is the, the money maker in this team. I boosted before this. All these characters were at level 90. Um, but as you can see, Jean, Siegfried, Brynhild at gear 11 max. Um, Dracona and Karana are not max 12. They've only got three or four pieces each. I did have to boost the levels. I boosted Karana and Jean to level 99 since they were the ones that I wanted to survive the longest. And I took Brynhild to 99 because she's the damage dealer and the quicker she can kill units, the better. So that's my team set up. We'll jump in and I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, so moving into this fight, we almost have to kill Belladonna within the first two, three, four turns. If we don't kill her to wipe, we just start the fight again. So use Great Gunyer against her, and then Brynhild will get another turn. Now, Shield Throw stuns the first target, it hits, and then bounces to two other targets. We don't want to use this against um, Belladonna. We want to use it against Rokan and stun him, and then move on to the Belladonna. Now, we should be able to kill her with Blessed Blade. It misses. We get another turn, we kill her. The perfect setup, if you want to restart this fight and get the perfect setup, it's Great Gunya, Belladonna hits her, Shield Throw, Rokan, the bounce hits Belladonna, kills her. That's the perfect setup. And then you move over to the Lascari. Um, that didn't happen for us, so we're just going to make do now and try and take out Lascari. Ideally, that would be the perfect situation if we could take her out. Okay, we're going to resurrect Siegfried here. He's going to take some more hits. I'm just going to use the resurrect to get us some HP back and take out Lascari. Now we're going to move to Rokan because he's going to taunt in two seconds. One, two, yeah, beautiful. So we're already starting to whip him down and get him out of the picture so we can move back onto other targets. It's an AOE there. Can we attack? Um, okay, we use shield throw. It's a waste of a stun, but get some damage out. And now we want to take out Chrome. Oh no, the mockery. Ooh. Take out Chrome. We gotta take out Chrome. I don't want him whipping us. There we go. Okay, now we can take out Dagan. Ah, uh, Thane Arg. My god, I hate the orc names. Oh, they are the worst. Okay, now we move on to Mordrake and we move into the next wave with one character down, but that's okay. We would like to take out. Okay, so we've stunned him and we almost 
let's try let's move on to do we get the double resurrect we do beautiful okay we try and take out arcane but the damage bounces to lascari which means we can try and take out lascari i'm just gonna use my basic beautiful okay defense is up one turn till we can resurrect we nearly take out the second lascari Oh, that didn't take her out. Take her out now. Oh, no, we're missing. We're missing a lot. Shield throw again. Keep that. Chrome locked down. We just don't want him casting. Okay, we take out Arcane. Move on to Chrome. Take out Chrome. Beautiful. Now we'll take out more Drake. Defense is up. Resurrects, who does I don't care. I really don't. Let's um that should kill. Let's just kill you. I just want to kill you because I know you're gonna do a lot of damage and then finish off. Oh, that's a painful that, that was like that was high 20 attempts. 20 plus attempts to get that, but that's how it works. Just a lot of RNG. I just hate how fights are so RNG dependent, but that's what you need to do to win the fight. And again, if you've got a better solution, let me know. I would love to know better solutions. But let's move on to the final node, mission number five. Mission number five consists of three waves and they are a nuisance again. We have a demon renegade team. Then we have a Dragonkin team, and then we have an Orc team. So three very powerful teams. The team we are going to be using for this is a Beastman Librarian team. So Beastman, Beastman, Beastman. Where are they? We have a Wukong Leader, a Rock, a Phoenix, and a Suna. And then we have the Librarian. Now, as you can see, my... Phoenix, Rock, and no, my Phoenix, Wukong, and Suna. All level 90 still. Um, six Arcane Stars, not seven. And gear 11 and 12, but not capped. Rock is the only character. Oh, sorry, no. Rock is the only character that's completely maxed and Librarian very close. The only thing missing on Librarian is um, the final Arcane Star. So we're just using this team as the means for explosions and the Phoenix Rebirths. Now, the Phoenix Rebirths, RNG. So you've got to rely on that a little bit, but this is the team I use. So we'll jump into the fight. I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, so moving into the first wave, we're going to use our Monkey Rage against the Morrigan here. We're going to use Fireball here. Get some support attack out. Now we're going to use can't touch this so we do more support damage use our aoe and then it double casts and takes out everyone so beautiful now we're going to use our aoe get some more support attacks here now we're going to freeze and now this is going to use another aoe take out most of the targets we want to take out ideally the Dexars so we can kill the Qatar. We are gonna taunt here so we don't lose our rock. Get the revive up on the characters. Beautiful, now we can take out Qatar. Now we do have the revive up as well, but we're at eight stacks. We really, really wanna go into the next wave. Yeah, oh, what a beautiful revive. I was really, really banking on that. But we unfortunately don't have the stacks now on our librarian. Really unfortunate. We use our fireball here, get some nice support attacks. Um, we do want to take out Lascari. So we'll just keep attacking and hopefully rack up some... Oh, nice freeze there. There we go. Nice explosion. Lose the Phoenix in a second, and hopefully she revives the rock. 
Come on, there we go. You see, you just gotta you just gotta rely. You've just gotta rely on the on the revives. Unfortunately, that's a big part of the fight. Now we take out Chrome. Ah, oh, beautiful. Okay. Uh, we need to take out Beautiful Revive again. It's, it, is, it is unfortunate that is what the fight is, but I oh, didn't get it that time. Okay, we really, really need to start taking this Thanarg out of the picture. He's out of the picture now. I'm not so worried about that Lascari because she has she will die. There we go. Beautiful. And that is the fifth wave. And that is completing all five missions of the hardest level of the season three of Cradle of Chaos. There's my score. I don't know if that's better or worse than my last one. Three, seven, eight, four. Doesn't really matter. And yeah, there you go. So that is the, yeah, what is it? Region three, level seven, all five missions. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer them to the best of my ability. And we'll be around the world. Until next time, please take care of yourself.